title of this extension publication, by the way, is, is Effectiveness of Gypsum in the North Central Region of the United States, SF-1321, if you want to download it, it's free. It says, Effectiveness of Gypsum, Tillage Depth, and Tile Spacing, Reducing Sodium Saturation in Southern Illinois Soils. This is pulled from a Sharma 19, 1974 proceeding. And you have here a gypsum rate in tons per acre, the depth they tilled it, and then the sodium saturation. And you will indeed notice that eventually you apply enough gypsum that the sodium saturation declines from about 5.7 to 6, something like that, to about 1.7 milliequivalents per 100 grams. So that's CEC. Okay. So there was five on the CEC. You want to call it that five centimoles of positive charge per kilogram soil. If you want to do it in those units to about 1.7. So if, if you go, well, Travis, I mean, you just said it doesn't do much, but now you're showing it does. Well, no, it does. It can happen. Look at the rates, 27 tons per acre tilled to three feet deep. That's what it took. When you applied 10 tons and tilled it in the top six inches, it was the same as doing nothing. Nothing. It's all the exact same. 5.12 to 5.8, something like that in the in the sodium saturation on the CEC sites. It's only when you apply 27 tons. What is that per thousand square feet? Half a ton? Is that what that is? A half a ton per thousand square feet tilled to three feet deep to have an effective uh, to have an effect on sodium saturation. That's what it took. So I'm not, so this is what I'm saying. Biologically, it's plausible. I'm not saying it's not plausible, but is it possible? Is it, re, is it, is it reasonable to assume that you're going to have some sort of profound effect on turf grass by applying whatever you're applying in gypsum? It's unlikely. It's very, very unlikely. Let's look down here at some of the yields of these, these row crops. Gypsum influence on spring wheat and corn yield. Notice zero gypsum. They had 200, I guess this is bushels per acre. Corn, 200 bushels per acre, let's just call it 200 and 200 at, with no gypsum. When they applied 300 pounds per acre, they had 200 and 200. There was no difference. There was no difference between the corn yields on, or on the wheat yields at all when you applied no gypsum or 300 pounds of gypsum. Let's look at the gypsum influence on corn and soybean yield. This is from Beresford, South, South Dakota and Gelderman in 2003. Gypsum rate of zero resulted in 108 bushels per acre. When you applied gypsum, 600 pounds or 1,500 pounds, there was no difference in yield, zero. But look what, ha look what happens to soybeans. 39 bushels per acre of soybeans. When they applied 600 pounds of gypsum or 1,500 pounds of gypsum, it went down from 39 to 34. There is a reduction in yield as a result of applying gypsum when it went on soybeans. Let's look at gypsum influence on spring wheat yield in the rural South Dakota. No gypsum, 74 bushels per acre of wheat. 140 pounds of gypsum, 67 bushels, uh, bushel, no difference, no statistical difference, no difference. So is it biologically plausible for gypsum to have some sort of influence on the, on the aggregate stability or the sodium issue in, in, in soils? It's biologically plausible, but it's not realistically going to happen. <laughs> First of all, you have to have the problem, which most people probably don't have sodic soils. Most people probably don't have you know, these, these soils that gypsum would help alleviate. But even if you did have it, you're talking massive, massive quantities in order to impart an actual beneficial effect.